commercials. Good evening, Beamons. Get your Bibles ready, everybody. Give everyone a few minutes to get on. While people are gathering, it seems like we might be getting that much closer to things beginning to reopen. I don't know what the restrictions will be on churches as of yet. But, uh, of course, we're hoping to be able to gather soon. Hi, Gilcrest family. Everybody get your Bibles. If you have a, a page Bible, even better tonight. You can follow along with me in your page Bible. Paper Bibles. If not... Pull out your digitals, I got both in front of me, so. Hi, John and Diana. Bless you guys. Hi, Rose family. Trying to make some lighting adjustments here to get our lighting a little bit better, a little bit of a glare here. Tonight, the sun's in different position as the days are getting longer now. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles tonight as we just get into the Word here a bit. I want you to be able to put your own eyes on the Scriptures. I say get your page Bibles because it's still nice to be able to go back to a page paper Bible and, and uh, something about flipping through the pages that I do sometimes miss for sure. And uh, so I, I do have my, my pages and I, I got my digital. I'm going to be talking about prayer tonight. I want to talk about prayer. And it's going to follow up with uh, what we have been speaking on in the previous weeks. I, I did uh, three parts on uh, religion or relationship. And so this is going to follow suit with that in, in the relational aspect, in the relationship part of it. Because prayer is very relational. Prayer is very relational, and that's some of what we want to focus on tonight, is the communication part. As I spoke last week, that relationship has so much to do with communication, and without communication, what can you say really exists in relationship without communication? When communication begins to decline in all all varieties of our relationships, whether, what, whether on spiritual levels or, or uh, physical levels, that, that we, we begin to uh, find distance in that relationship because of the lack of communication. But communication helps us to bridge divides. Communication helps us to bridge gaps. Communication will help us get connected again to one another. Communication helps us get connected to God. And so when communication is at a, a null or when communication has been uh, slowly dwindling, we, we oftentimes realize that we, we've uh, it been in a, a bit of a, a pull away where we've lost, we, we, we've lost the connection in some ways. Not that uh, God has left us in any way or shape or form like that, but that, that we have withdrawn in our communication. And so because we've stopped talking and probably because we've also stopped listening. So communication, how many know it's, it, it, is, it, it is 
talking and it is listening. And it's been said before, say it again, because it is worth saying that God has given us one mouth and two ears. And so we, we are able to speak, but we are able to listen from both sides of our head. And so it's so important that in communication that we are not only speaking. Many people, that is their only, uh, their only approach, it seems, a much of the time to communication and relationship is uh, how much will you allow them to speak? How much will you allow them to speak? But, but the Lord shouldn't have to try and get a word in edgewise with us. Amen. But we should be training ourselves to not only speak, as it's so important that we communicate with heaven, but again, communication is both ways, but that we are, uh, we are, we are speaking our prayers, but also we are receiving back. We are hearing what the Lord has to say to us. We, we are allowing him to imprint his self, himself, his word, to, to touch our hearts in, in uh, uh, deep places and also surface places where we're allowing the Lord to touch our heart. So we're going to be talking a lot about communication again as we talk about prayer because th this is what prayer is hugely about as we communicate with God, as he communicates with us and and, and we make declaration, we, we hear his voice speaking over our life and, and places where we've been uh, in deception places where where we've not yet had revelation of truth god is able to speak into our hearts god is able to speak into our life when revelation comes it sets us free when revelation comes it opens our eyes it's light shining in the darkness and, and all of a sudden things that we had never seen before those things become clear to us, clearer to us as, as, as we have our eyes open in a way that we've never had them open before. And, and there's so many places that God can do this. And of course, we often don't realize what those places are until God begins to do this in some of our ways. Because oftentimes you think you know everything about a certain subject until God gives you revelation. Or you think you, you have an understanding of the love of Jesus until all of a sudden you get revelation. Now that revelation is not likely the completeness of everything that there is to be revealed there, but it is something that you've never known before, and therefore you have connected in a way you've never connected before because of that revelation has come. But I, I will say that uh, almost all, if not all, of the great experiences that I've had with God, in one way or another, I've been in communication with the Lord. When I think back to some of the great experiences I've had with God, where he's touched me, where I felt his presence, where, where revelation came, where he set me free, where he healed me, where he liberated me, you know, through these experiences of God where you watched him turn your emotional state around, witnessed it, you witnessed him, you know, just, 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 step into your situation and, and, and bring a, a, a peace in the middle of, uh, of your uh, torment or your distractions and everything that was trying to uh, consume you like a hurricane, but an experience with God bringing in peace. You know, when I think of just all the times where I've experienced the Lord, I, I think that there was always some kind of communication in, in, in one way or another. I, I was going to bring this up later, but as I'm on this now, I'll just make mention of this because Last week, I just made uh, made mention of the five love, love, five love languages that uh, that uh, you can read about or, or look up or Google. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what what they are. And, and I'm just saying this because I see communication in all of these things. And so it said that that some of us have uh, stronger points of what our love languages are, and that's that's where uh, that we are able to receive love greater or or uh, also give away love. And so sometimes we are disconnected from people because we we are misinterpreting the way that they are loving us. And, and so or or you know we're giving in one way, but uh, the way that they're used to receiving love is maybe a, a different type of the love language, but I see communication in all of the love languages. And now, of course, this isn't uh, uh, something that uh, we, we take out of the Bible, but I, I just think it fitting and worth mentioning. Five love languages, words of affirmation. 
Well, words, of course, huge communication. Acts of service. So you're, you're, you know, you're, you're talking about uh, physical gestures, receiving gifts and being on the opposite end of that, where, where you know, there, there is a reception, somebody giving. It, 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 it's very much a connection, very much a connection, very much, a, you know, when, when you give, it, it, is, it is stating something, it, it's stating caring, it, it's stating affection or, or thoughtfulness that somebody had, had th you, you know, you, somebody's thought of you and so they're, they're, they're giving you a gift and, and so, you know, some people that, that speaks uh, to them of love or physical touch. You know, and, and all of these things that are quality time was the other one where, where there is quality time spent with one another or in the presence of God or God, you know, where we get alone with God. And, and you know, of course, we relate these things to our, our uh, human relationships as well. And then uh, the last one I had already mentioned was physical touch. And so in all of these things, there is a type of communication that is taking place. And so God communicates with us in different ways. But of course, you know, our, our strongest points are going to be through his word and through prayer, but then incorporated also into these things are things like worship, worship, when we're worshiping the Lord. When, when, when we begin to praise the Lord, when, when we spend time uh, turning our heart and our attention and our focus towards Him. And, and you know, worship, of, again, is, I know, is more than just uplifted hands or, or just when we worship with an assembly, but also how we live our lives as we focus our life around the Lord and, and we uh, respond to, to His Word in our living and also that is again, you know, another form of worship. And so worship is communicating with God. I'm saying this to say that in these ways where I, I felt God touch me, you know, you felt God touch you in worship. You know, you have felt God touch you in prayer. I'm sure you felt the Lord speak to you and touch you through the ministry of the word, whether it was being preached or whether in your own devotion time where you sit down reading and you sit down praying and you just, you know, the Lord just causes something to come alive to you. And that communication as the Lord is communicating his love through his love letters, through his written word, or, or through, you know, the voice of God, or the hearing his, his voice in our hearts as he communicates with us, as we talk with him. So as we're talking about communication and prayer, I want to start first with Ephesians 2 and 13. Turn there with me, okay? Turn there with me. Get on your, uh, you get your quick draw going, flick your thumbs, whatever you got to do, your digital, amen, and just, just flick there with me because I want you to put your eyes on some of these scriptures yourself rather than just having me uh, read them to you. But, but if you don't have access, uh, of course, I'm, I'm going to read them as well. And, and so Ephesians 2 and 13 says, but now you have been united, this is New Living Translation, Ephesians 2, 13. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations he made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups, together as one body, Christ reconciling both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. And, and so what I want to draw from these verses, if you go back to the beginning where he says, once we were far away, but now we've been brought near. What I, I, I was getting out of these verses as I, I prepared this message was closeness, was closeness. How communication and relationship is about closeness. It's finding ways to pull us together, even if there's many things around us trying to pull us apart. And, and for instance, we could use the example of, uh, of uh, a pandemic. You know, how many could relate to something far-fetched like a pandemic happening in the world? Sounds like a crazy thing. But if there were ever to be a pandemic happen, you know, it might pull people away a little bit or people might start getting disconnected. And so they would look for ways to, to get connected because there's things that are trying to separate them and things that are trying to pull them afar. So, so may, I don't know, maybe churches would start going online or something in a situation like that. And maybe, maybe people would start getting on Zoom or 
Facebook and find ways to connect. Of course, just talking, talking hypothetically in case there was ever such an event that would transpire. And so this might be a fair illustration right now if you can catch my sarcasm. That people are finding ways to connect and things that will bring us close even though there are things that are trying to cause us to drift and things that are trying to tear us apart. But sin had tore us apart from God. Sin had put a distance between us that nothing else could connect or nothing else could restore or breach that gap or that divide other than the blood of Jesus. But God loved us and God had fellowship with man and he made man to have fellowship and communication with him where he could speak, uh, where, where men could commune with God and commune, God could commune back as, as the scriptures would talk about in Genesis, I think it's six, where the voice of God would come walking in the garden in the cool of the day and, 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 and come to speak to Adam. But Adam would hide himself because of sin where, where uh, you know, he would try and clothe himself and cover himself and, and communications had been interrupted communications had been broken so now i love these verses in ephesians where it talks about the blood of christ bringing us close where communications had been broken not just interrupted sure they were interrupted but they were also broken but the blood of jesus where we were separated from god where there was this huge divide that no man could breach you couldn't you you couldn't get across this divide but the blood of christ has prevailed for us and where we were separated from God the blood the blood of Jesus has now brought us nigh it's brought us close so as we're talking again about prayer communication we're looking at this as closeness where God wants us close God wants us close and we see uh, how God is so relational he doesn't want us at a distance he wants us close to him he wants us connected to him he, he, he wants us uh, uh, able to ha have open lines of communication amen where, where we are putting out but we are also taking in the things that the father would amen putting his heart in us and so prayer is very much a place where we can unload our thoughts and unload uh, the things that are in our heart. I know many times uh, people think of prayer as a place to um, get rid of their feelings, you know, unload their feelings. And that, that, uh, that's fair. And we certainly in communication with God, you know, we, we, we can release our feelings. But I think even deeper than that, is releasing what's in our hearts. And sometimes I realize they're connected, but also a lot of times what's going on is, is the battle in our heads is separating us from the things that are actually in our own hearts. Can you can you uh, relate to that a little bit out there today to what I'm saying? And, and, and so when we get in communication with God, however, he helps us get straightened out so we can get our head out of the way so we can get to our own heart and get to his heart and his heart get to ours. So that line of communication. And so here where we're talking about closeness, as we're talking about relationship, we're talking heart to heart heart hallelujah heart to heart where we're getting heart to heart to god amen and sometimes i realize that when we come into prayer we have so much going on in our heads that we have to get you know lay out some of our feelings lay out some of our thoughts and 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 just kind of pour ourselves out for a little while and, and then we get to the place where you know we, we we are able to get connected to what's actually in our hearts and what god is trying to do in our hearts because God wants to work in your heart. God wants to bring about lasting change. And lasting change is not going to come about just getting something in our heads, but really just getting something in our hearts. And of course, the mind can be a gateway for this. But oftentimes, there is just a disconnect between our head and our heart. And, and so when we can come to God and pour out, pour out, pour out, pour out our minds, then get ready to the place where we can pour out our hearts. Now, I don't, I don't always feel like I need to get every thought out or anything like that, but, but sometimes, you know, we, we do need to get in that place where we can get our head clear and, and, and get heart to heart with God. I hope you can kind of just catch what I'm saying there. Um, I want to go Hebrews 4 and 13. Where it says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, 
For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I love that relational aspect there where Jesus Christ, our high priest, our high priest is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. And we are naked before him. Amen. The first verse in 13 said, there is neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked. All things are naked. And so in, in, in Genesis, where, where man sinned and that divide came, you know, he's still naked in the sight of God, but he's trying to hide away. He's trying to cover himself up. But let me tell you something. We're all naked in the sight of God. God knows us the very best. Hallelujah. He knows us the very best, and he knows all the intricacies of who we are better than we know ourselves. And so oftentimes prayer is helping us get by many of our misconceptions and our bad beliefs, and, and not just prayer, but, you know, through study, through meditation. All of this is communication. Communication, communication, but we are focusing in on prayer tonight. We have a high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. That's awesome. I just love that. But was in all points tempted, like as we are yet without sin. And then it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I, I love these verses. The verse that we read before this, of course, spoke of how it was the blood of Jesus that, that uh, took away the separation between us and God and now has brought us back into that closeness and, and made us one, brought us nigh when we were so far separated. And now he's saying that, that we can come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So it's so important that as we approach God, that when we pray, we, we have a, a, a mind, a, an understanding of what our position is, our position, that, that because of the blood of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, I can now enter into the holy place. Because of the blood of Jesus, where I, I take my, my focus off of, of, of all of my uh, successes and all of my failings, and I just put my faith and trust in what he has done to bring me nigh and put my confidence there. Because even if I weigh out my goods and my bads, my successes with my failures, my confidence is still not going to be very well, even if my ups far outweigh my downs, my confidence is probably not going to be in the place, will not be in the place where we can come boldly. But if we can realize that the blood of Jesus, understanding what the blood of Jesus has accomplished, then we can come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. What a beautiful thing to think of approaching our Father with boldness. Amen. And I just want to draw your attention where I do say our Father. That's also how Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, where he gave us the Lord's Prayer, and that after this manner we were to pray, our Father. Think of how relational that is when we're not just, you know, it's not just God, although there's nothing wrong with saying that, but 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 where we are recognizing uh, the relational part of it, where we are family, where, we, where he has made us one, that I am communing with my Father, that I am coming to him as his child, I am approaching the heart of my Father, because of the blood of Jesus, I've now been washed and brought into this family, and I can come before his throne with a boldness. Another scripture in 2 Timothy that we know says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The Amplified Bible says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and a calm and well-balanced mind. So again, when we correlate that with Hebrews, and the Bible's talking about us coming boldly before the throne, and we realize that God hasn't given me a spirit of timidity, that, that, that he is calling me to approach him with boldness, a boldness and a confidence in what Jesus has accomplished for me, that, that I can come in there and, and that I would have faith, that I would come to him in faith, because he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. But I, if I'm going to come to him, I, I, I need to approach him, I need to approach him with faith. I need to have an understanding 
of what it is that's brought me access. Hallelujah. Access. Amen. And, and so by, by faith, we access this grace. There's a scripture I, that just came to me again now, and I think is Romans 5, that by faith, we have access into this grace. And, and so uh, where, where fear would try and separate us, where fear would try and, and cause us to withdraw, and we don't communicate with God. Think about that. When we, when oftentimes when we get afraid, when we get condemned, instead of approaching God's throne, we draw back. When we, we draw back, we, we allow communications to get interrupted. Instead of entering in, that we may obtain that grace, that we can get that mercy that, that, that is there for us, what we need in this time. And instead, we often allow fear and condemnation to separate, to interrupt our lines of communication instead of putting our faith and our trust in the blood and, and just stepping in and, and knowing that there is help for me in what I'm struggling with right now. There is help for me. I can go to the throne of God. There is a place I can go. There is a safety for me in the heart of my father. There is a hiding place in the heart of my father and I can go unto him and find the things that I have need of. It, it, and, and so this is our father. And so as we talk about prayer tonight, uh, I want us to, uh, you know, think about developing in prayer, maturing in prayer, maturing. You think about when you first talk to somebody, Unless you're of a special breed of a few random people, not random, but a few people that I know, communications are, are often, uh, 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 you know, not at the tip of the tongue, not right at the tip of the tongue, but, but you know, uh, even though words might be at the tip of the tongue sometimes, communication, I think, deeper than that still, right? And so maybe you're quick with words, but communication is still something deeper. And communication, I, I think, you know, has an element of trust as well, where we, you know, we learn to uh, relate to one another, understand one another, <laughs> understand one another, and connect to one another. And then we begin to, uh, you know, uh, open up. And all of a sudden, connections start start happening. And so I want you to think about maturing in prayer because I think some a lot of Christians are still stuck uh, praying like childhood prayers, childhood prayers, or you know, uh, repetition, uh, recitings, and, and, and you know, uh, uh, not recognizing that closeness of Father, 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 or we're approaching religiously. We're coming of a religious mind. We're, we're coming from a place of fear and, and not approaching my father. And I just wonder, when was the last time you said that? When was the last time you said that? When was the last time you prayed that? When was the last time your heart just worshiped like that? Father, father, father. You know, that, 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 that is something that comes out in a heart of worship. And that is something also that will come out as we begin to connect with God and realize that we're in the presence of our father. Hallelujah. And we know what a great thing that is, even naturally speaking, the, the, the importance of a father and, and all that that means for the structure of our lives and the structures of our families. We know today that, uh, much of the problems that are in society and in our generations is because of the absence of a father, as the absence of a father. And this, of course, we're not trying to minimize the importance of mothers because we know mothers, thank God for mothers and Mother's Day's coming. And so we want to bless our mothers and say happy Mother's Day to our mothers in advance. But that's getting ready to come. And so I'll hold off on that till till Sunday. But we recognize the, the dynamic of that. And, and, and so if we see that on a natural level, how much more do we recognize? I need my heavenly father. I need my heavenly father. I need him close. I need to know him. I, I need to allow myself, even though that I am naked before him. He sees everything. Oftentimes we're still like Adam and we're trying to cover ourselves up and, and hide all of these places away. It's not, it doesn't work. He, he sees all of that. But that place of faith and that place of trust where we've connected with God, where, 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 where we can start, uh, you know, 
taken away the grass skirts and everything that we, we, we in our humanity, in our humanity, in, in our sins, in our failings, we reached for some of these things to cover up, cover up our hearts and, and hide us away from God and some of these things that we've grabbed that, 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 that have caused us to draw back. But as we realize the heart of my Father, my good, good Father, my Father who loves me, I can take off some of these things and realize I am naked before him anyway, but, but he wants me to be willing to expose my heart before him and open up these places in my heart, places where we maybe never let people go. And, and you know, I, I don't know if all the times that we can just do these things intentionally because some of these things, we, we, we have built so many walls around and there's so many intricacies and we don't even realize sometimes some of the places that we've been shut off. But when we begin to open up ourselves to the Lord and there's something about worship and there's something about the presence of the Lord and the, there's something about his word that has a way of bypassing these things and getting past our safeguards and, and getting past the war in our heads and, and touching these vulnerable places in our life where we, we, we've uh, arrested ourselves, where we've closed ourselves off, but, but he's able to get in there and in his presence and he just starts breaking off some of those chains and then we can, you know, we, we start making those choices. Lord, here's, here's this area of my heart. Here's this place in my life. And, and you know, places where we can maybe make a, a witness of truth to ourselves that we've never even said before that didn't say, yeah, yeah, right. You're right, Lord. I have struggled there. You're right, Lord. I, you know, I have been proud. You're, you're right, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. You're right. I've been selfish. Yeah, yeah, yes, Lord. You're right. I, I've hated my brother. You know, yes, yes, Lord. You're right. I, I you know, uh, th th there is that need of things that we might not even acknowledge to ourselves, but in a place of communication and an intimacy with God, as we learn how to open our hearts to Him. And you know, if we, we if you don't trust Him, if you don't trust Him, you, you might not let Him into those places. You know, but if you trust Trust him, and you have those lines of communication where you realize the gentleness of God. Amen. Someone should say amen right now when you realize the gentleness of God and how he is so gentle. And uh, I, I tell you, that's something that I've certainly learned as I, I think back over uh, times of experiencing God and communicating with God. All oh, his gentleness, all oh, his gentleness, and how in our times of frustration and in our times of anxiety, in our times of, of wavering, in our times of weakness, how our, our gentle, loving, heavenly Father can grab us and, and, and draw, us, draw us in like, like a lamb into his bosom, and he can, and he can hold us, and he can he can secure us in the place where we pour our hearts out to him and even acknowledge our, our weaknesses and our sins. And he, he, he and there we, we find a deliverance and there we find healing and he covers us and he, and, and he reveals to us what the blood has done for us and, and what his grace has done for us. And, and he, he, he shows us how, how we are covered and he shows us how we are clothed as he holds us tight. You see, discommunication, is that the right word to use discommunic miss miss dis miss you get the drift anyway whatever uh syllable or whatever you want to put before that but but uh, uh miscommunication uh when, when we get disconnected we start believing a lot of lies can somebody say amen again <laughs> uh, what was that uh thing i was on on our, our group page again about how do you know your pastor <laughs> some people had some good answers for that You'll get more if you tune in. You keep tuning in. You'll learn a little bit more uh, of some of some of my uh, my sayings and some of my cliches. <laughs> but as we connect with God and we learn His gentleness, oh, what a change in our life! Hallelujah! Oh, what a change in our life! And so we think of how important it is to have a communication with God and, and, and in times of prayer. And so here's where I want to get to something in prayer. And, and uh, we, I've mostly been just spending time again on communication, but again, what we're saying is this is prayer. This is this this is how 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 do we withdraw communication from prayer? I mean that that's that. 
prayer is, you know, uh, it's just this is this is what what communication is. We're we're communing with God in one way or another, and there's also declarations and all of these things. But again, all of that, you know, if you're if we're confessing, if we're speaking, even even you know, uh, making declarations of His Word. I think even then, where there's a line of communication, as we hold on to His Word, we hold on to His promise, right? And we make declaration towards our circumstances, as we make declaration uh, towards situation in our life. There's the, if we're praying in that way where you think you know uh, you know you might not be uh, directly saying oh you know god you know what how's things in heaven today <laughs> just an illustration there i don't i don't ever pray that way i don't think but uh, uh you know just where, where you have a hand though on, on uh, the things of god and the promises of god like one hand in heaven but at the same time you're taking his word and making connection or, or declaration i would rather say to, to to circumstances to the storms in our life and we're saying peace be still hallelujah and we're making declaration where 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 the spirit of fear is trying to come against our life and we're holding on to his promise and we're saying, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Or we're holding on and we're saying, I will not be afraid because the Lord has said that, that he is with me. And time and time again, we find scriptures where, where God told us not to be afraid because he's with us. And so we see even in declaration, there's communication. We got a, a hand on to heaven. We got a hand on to his word and a hand on to his promise, making declaration over our lives and to circumstances, trying to interrupt the things that God uh, is trying to manifest in our lives where he's trying to bring his will. And, and so sickness may be trying to interrupt and, and sickness trying to stop us in our journey, but we're holding on to the word that he's given us that, that by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed and I'm holding on to the promise, making declaration by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed. Praise God. I want to turn now to James 5.16. And uh, this, this will be my last verse and I'll close with this. While you're turning there, let me just uh, uh, say this point that, that the Lord is our father. God is our father and also our friend. Mm -hmm. And so we think of communication with our father, and we also think of communication with friends. And the Bible talked about how Jesus said, you are my friends. If you do the things I tell you, the things I've commanded, you're my friends. And, and, and the Bible said of Abraham that he was a friend of God. We are friends with God. What a beautiful thing that is. He's our father, and he's also our friends. Now, let's not take that uh, uh, so lightly or look at that so shallow as I think some people do where, where they uh, fail to recognize who he is. And, you know, it's not like you're, you're not talking about your buddy that grew up down the street, right? You know, well, you know, yo, what up? Yo, what up, Lord? You know, just, you know what I'm saying? Where you're, <laughs> I, I'm just, that's, this is the best way I'm trying to think to illustrate to you what I'm saying, where, where you're just, you know, uh, minimizing the fact that this, this isn't just your bestie that, that, you know, uh, that you used to play cars with and used to, you know, ha have your uh, FaceTimes with, you know, the, the, but still, right, he's my friend, but he's also almighty. <laughs> he's also God and he's also divine. That doesn't take away from who he is, but we also just recognize what a, what a privilege, what an honor, hallelujah, what an honor, this great God, this God who is to be feared and reverenced, reverenced, with a holy fear, with a reverence, with the fear of God and, and having understanding in that, what that is, but recognize this great God, my friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. My friend. What an awesome thing that is. And so James 5.16, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified, and I will close again with these scriptures. AMPC version, Amplified Classic Version. I want to read this to you to right now. I like the way it breaks this down very well. James 5.16. Confess your faults or confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your faults, steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another. So why don't you just turn to somebody beside you right now and confess your faults? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not always so easy to do, is it? That's not a light thing. That's not an easy thing to do. And that's, that, of course, is something that is very relational and something that involves a lot of trust. 
And so as with a, the scripture is teaching us to uh, confess our faults to one another, I, I, I am very much a believer that there, there, is, there is healing in, in openness. There's healing in openness. Of course, I always exercise a word of caution and to say, be careful who you talk to, man. Be careful who you talk to. Be, because, uh, you know, some relationships, they're just not what you think they are. And, and sometimes you, you might open up and somebody tread on, on, on those areas of your heart that you've exposed to them. And that, 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 that can be so painful that I wouldn't want any of you to experience that. But at the same time, let, let us also recognize the importance of openness, okay? Let us also recognize that, how important it is to learn to be open. And as I know this is something that the Lord has done in my life to large degrees is teaching me how to open because uh, so many uh, religious mindsets taught me how to be closed and, and taught me that if uh, if anybody uh, can detect uh, uh, any kind of weakness in you, they're, they're going to use that to their advantage. They're going to get some kind of, uh, you know, platform on you and they're going to put themselves above you and, and minimize you because because you are willing to, you know, share your heart in ways that they, they still continue to, to, to close off. And, but, but, you know, it is important, I'm sure, and I hope and pray that you have some people in your life, a spouse or a, a friend so close, a counselor, somebody that, that you are able to confide in because there is, there is a lot of healing in, in openness and, and being able to uh, talk about some things that are painful. There's a lot of healing that happens in that kind of communication where we can talk about things that are painful. And a lot of you out there today, you know, you, you still need to do that. You still need to do that. Some of you have not been willing to open up in some of the places in your heart where where you would uh, uh, communicate or allow that healing to come. But God still wants to bring uh, a greater healing to your life. And it's not about causing you just to relive the past or anything like that. And some people, of course, get stuck uh, just reliving the past. That's not what this is about. But uh, also being willing to be open open it, you know uh, I'm sure it's easy it's easy to share our, our, our strengths and it's easy to you know uh, share things that are pretty shallow but it's not so easy to share points of our pain is it it's not it's not it's not so easy to to open up about things that we've hated about ourselves or things that we've disliked about ourselves and and, and places of our shame and places of our failings and our sufferings or, or hurts even that just that you know that that uh, uh, weren't of our own making but but inflicting deep things into our life and I, I didn't really intend to talk about this this way this evening but uh, I, I hope that that is speaking to somebody and that the Lord bring continue to bring healing into your heart into these areas of your life because I, I just I just know today that the, the Lord wants to continue to do works of healing and wholeness in our life as we continue to put faith and trust in him this isn't about trying to lay on a couch and continuing to spin our tires over the past over and over and over and not getting anywhere but what I'm talking about is how important it is to be open and how many know that open people uh, help us to open up and people that are willing to share their weaknesses man there's so much easy they're so much easier to connect to they're easier to trust you know because you see that they're willing to be vulnerable and, and that provokes that in us that you know that that we all we 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 feel more even though still not easy but but creating a better environment for us also to learn to be vulnerable which is something you know that too easily happens in church culture uh where, where uh you know we, we all become so guarded so so afraid of being misjudged and misunderstood things that the things that things that are so very painful that that we lose that that beauty of openness that beauty of that and, and where 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 there is healing and where there is uh restoration and where there is deliverance and so however that speaks to you today by the holy spirit i just pray lord that you work in our hearts amen but but confess to one another therefore your faults your slips your false steps your offenses your sins and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored. Before I just uh, uh, go any further, because we're talking about prayer, I wanted to talk about a few things that we can be praying for. You know, as we're, uh, we, we've been in the shutdown now for, I, I don't even know how many days it's been. It's obviously going on a couple months now. And, and uh, 
there's certainly been a, a time for more prayer. I, I wonder, you know, has there been more prayer in, in, in most of our lives? But there's certainly, uh, I'm sure, I know a lot of people that they still have been first responders in different areas where people have still been working, of course. And so their schedule maybe didn't change a lot. But for a lot of people, it did, where, where there was more time to pray. But I wanted to maybe just focus on some things that we could be prayerful about in regards to our church. Because, uh, uh, you know, we, we haven't really had the time or the uh, opportunity to be together to talk about some of these things and raise the vision and to talk about some of the things where we're excuse me where we're reaching for or some of the things that we're believing for and so some of the things that are, are very important to be in prayer about is prayer for prayer for one another which the, the scripture teaches us here prayer for one another you know the church is a body the church is made up of a body some of the things that we're believing for for our assembly for our group and and we haven't even officially launched our church yet i know obviously with this uh, uh onslaught of a pandemic coming on things kind of uh went a different direction than than a lot of us uh uh thought that we were going to go but again some of the things that we're praying for is going to be when, when it's god's time and for the right building we, we we want to we do want a building where we can gather and, and assemble pray about that with us would you pray about that and would you believe for that okay pray about that believe for that pray for the resources and the connections to be made that we need so that there there be all the financial needs met that we're going to have pray for one another to be strengthened pray 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 that uh, uh, the lord continue to bring in that the Lord continue to bring in, connecting more people to this ministry, that the Lord continue to reach out and bring in those who he's willed to be connected to this ministry and reaching uh, 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 people that have never known God as we want to be uh, also uh, uh, evangelistic, reaching the culture, reaching our, our community and those uh, who who don't know the Lord and, and, and bringing in the fresh born babies into the kingdom of God. Pray for music ministry. That's something that we have a need of, okay? So, but we want to be prayerful about that because lots of times we identify the needs but forget to pray for things. So pray for music ministry. Pray for worship team and, and, and for the, the Lord to draw people in as these are areas where we need help and we need prayer. And, and so I just wanted to make mention of those things and some things for you to write down, take note of. So that while well, we have this time as a group, as a group, and I hope you write some of these things down. If you got to go back to what I said, watch it over and, and write these things down and add it to your prayer list okay because these are important things and, and things that we can all you know i can pray i can pray and my wife can pray and, and uh, uh you know this person down the road can pray but if we all start praying as a group that much more prayer that much more powerful and, and so let, let we bind together in prayer where one, you know, said one, one could put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And we know that there is so much power in agreement. And so I'm asking you to uh, remember these things in prayer. But going back now to the scripture here, as I'm getting ready to close, where he's talking first about confessing our faults and our weaknesses and all of these things. And he says to uh, Pray for one another that, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Now, I love this. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And I'm sure that this scripture is going to find its way into our next week Bible study as well, because there's a lot to be dissected from this. As they're talking about first that connecting and that healing and, and, and praying for one another, being restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart, he says that the earnest, a heartfelt prayer. So we're not just talking about repetition. We're not just talking about reciting. We're not just talking about praying a nursery rhyme, but learning how to open up our hearts and connect with God, praying from our heart, you know, our, 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 the cries of our heart, the cries of our heart, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. I think that word earnest, I haven't looked it up for a while and I, I didn't think to do it before studying, but if I remember correctly, it's not talking about P. Worrell. It's actually talking about sincerity. Now, I, I'll just see if anybody catches that. It's, it, I, think, I think sincerity is actually, I, I think, one of the things that we can attach to what it is to pray earnestly. And uh, I might have to look that up to see if I'm right after. But the earnest, 
heartfelt, heartfelt, continued prayer. So the, the, think of what's being said here. God wants us praying sincerely from our hearts, earnestly uh, stirred up and, and continuing to pray. So we're not just praying once and, well, guess that didn't work. Oh, well, let's move on. Let's, let's find some other resource to tap into. But we're praying, we're expectant. We're expectant. And, and as we stay in faith, we stay in prayer. We stay connected. We stay in communication, not not asking repetitiously, or not begging, not 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 acting as though he didn't hear us the first time, the seventh time, the twenty seventh time. But it's staying and maintaining in a place of faith and communication, continuing in prayer. The continued prayer of a righteous man does what? It makes tremendous power available. Man, how many things in our world need tremendous power right now? How many things in this church and in this ministry that we're getting ready to launch? We need tremendous power available. We need the Lord to do some awesome things. So many things that we're believing for, and that's exciting. That's exciting. You know, I look at it, think sometimes a little bit daunting, but also exciting, all right? And so let's recognize that, you know, we're on a journey and there's a lot of things to pray for, believe God for, and that's exciting. That's exciting to be able to watch what God can do, to be able to watch what God builds, to be able to watch how God moves, but it's going to take prayer. A earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available and it's dynamite in its working. So you think of how powerful dynamite is and how dynamite often used to break up stony ground so that inroads can be made, so that travel, so that there can be advancement, that dynamite is often used for advancement, right? You know, we think of when the railways were laid and things like that. That's just what's the picture that comes to my mind uh, of people using dynamite to break up the rock so that there could be advancement. And there's many things that try and stand in our way of our journey. There's many things that try and, uh, and hold us back. There's many things and places where we need breakthrough. But these earnest, heartfelt, continued prayers of righteous people makes tremendous power available and dy dynamite, dynamic in its working, amen, causing breakthrough, causing there to be a breaking forth, amen, as we bust through the rock is that, that this prayer is making dynamite power available. We're acting on this prayer, this power that's been built up. You know, we're putting our, our, our faith with our works. We're moving as God is opening doors and, and, and advancing with the leading of the Holy Spirit. And, and God is bringing breakthrough as we've prayed. There's, there's dynamite power available bringing breakthrough into our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Doesn't that make you want to pray a little bit? Amen. Think about that. Oh, I, I need some dynamite power. Time to get into my prayer closet. Time to, Father, Father, need some of that dynamite prayer. Need some of that dynamite right now. Amen. Where prayer takes us to those resources of power where we can tap in and experience breakthroughs. Amen. So we've talked a lot tonight. I'm going to shut her down, but we've talked a lot tonight about communication and prayer and, and how it is closeness, getting into God's heart where, he, where, where we're being drawn into his heart and his heart is, is being formed on the inside of us and, and how we're, he's able to bring us past our safeguards and help us to get past our thoughts and our, our, our misconceptions and our and our bad believing. And these are some of the things that happen when we when we, we start getting into the word and we start getting into prayer, communicating with our Father, with our Father. Not just somebody else's God, no my Father, my Father. And Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for the great and awesome privilege it is to be able to call you our Father. And we thank you, Lord, today to know that you've called us your own. You've called us yours. You've referred to us as your children, your beloved. And Lord, we're just so thankful that we could say our Father, even right now today, our Father. I'm not alone. My Father, my Father is with me. And my friend is here. Oh, he's closer than a brother. He is 
and he sticks closer than a brother. The closest friend that I could ever have, this friend. Thank you, Jesus. What a friend you've been to us. Jesus, what a friend you've been to me. Jesus, you've been there when others walk away. Jesus, you've been there in, in the toughest of times, the most diff in season and out of season, the mountains and the valleys and all of the in-between. Jesus, you've always been there. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. And I just pray for each and every one, Lord, today listening, that they would all begin to experience, Lord, this closeness of a walk with you, Lord, today. Their, their prayer life, being strengthened, communication being opened, that they overcome the obstacles and the things, Lord, today that have tried to hold them, the fears, the the sins, the, 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 the habits, the places of, uh, of just not taking time, whatever it might be, God, you help us to get past these divides and lines of communication to be open. And we sense and experience the closeness that, that we have in you because of the blood of Jesus Christ, where we were separated, but you brought us close. And that's where your will is for us to be in your heart, in your bosom, as you hold us tightly and you hold us close, staying connected to you, amen, as you are the vine and we are the branches, Lord, that we be connected to you in order for there to be life and life to flow unto us. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. We love you. And we pray for one another today, Lord, every need being met. Let's just agree together right now, Lord, for anybody watching that healing, let healing virtue flow and be ye healed, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that healing is ours, Lord, and we receive healing. Lord, wherever there is need of restoration, wherever there is need today, Lord, of, of increase or whatever the need might be, we thank you today, Lord, that you are the faithful provider meeting our needs. And we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And so we say God bless you guys. Pastor Robert Lang. Love you, bless you, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. God loves you, we love you. God bless, be blessed, in Jesus' name, amen.